Our topic for today is science and technology and nation building. The topics under it are the Philippine government science and technology agenda, major development programs and personalities in science and technology in the Philippines, science education in the Philippines, and selected indigenous science and technologies. Okay. Brief historical background of science and technology in the Philippines includes pre-colonial period, colonial period, and post-colonial period. Pre-colonial period. Early Filipinos used certain plants and herbs as medicines. There exist systems of farming such as terracing as exemplified by the rice terraces in the Cordilleras and animal raising both for food production and helping in daily tasks. Science and technology is used for transportation, but for land and sea, engineering, mining, weaving, tool development, military purposes, and even music. Filipinos already had an alphabet, number system, a weighing and measuring system, and a calendar. Trade with other countries such as China, Indonesia, and Japan influence Filipino science and technology. Ancient Filipino science and technology are considered folk science or indigenous science. Okay, let's talk about a colonial period that includes Spanish colonization. Sanitation and more advanced method of agriculture was taught to the natives. Schools were established for introduction of concepts in science and technology, which began formal science and technology education. Early science education focused on the human body, plants, animals, and heavenly bodies. Early technology education focused on the use and development of tools for everyday life. Medicine and advanced sciences were introduced in formal colleges, and universities established by Catholic orders, biology, and medicine were given focus. Okay, during the Spanish times or the Spaniards colonizations, we already have our education system wherein only the higher-ups went to school. And mostly, the schools we have those times are composed of priests and Catholic members of the church, okay? Galleon trade allowed both goods and ideas from the West to reach the country. Through this benefited the colonizers more than the Filipinos. Selected Filipinos were able to go to Europe and study science and technology. Some contributors in science and technology during this period are Father Ignacio Mercado, Dr. Trinidad Pardo Tedovera, and Dr. Leon Magorero. Chemist Anacleto del Rosario and medicine scholars Dr. Manuel Guerrero, Dr. Jose Montes, and Dr. El Rodario Mercado. However, superstitions and Catholic doctrines did not allow science and technology to grow and reach its full potential. Of course, as we mentioned during our last discussion, it is like how Darwinian theory was being opposed by the church so during these times the science and technology that change doesn't grow it cannot reach its full potential because of some limitations okay and uh, during those times do you remember that dr jose rizal his himself even go abroad to study diba okay now this is Father Ignacio Mercado. He is a Filipino botanist who cataloged over 200 plants in the country at that time. Born in Manila in 1648 to a Spanish father and a Filipino mother, Father Mercado's work preceded by 200 years Augustinian friar and botanist Father Manuel Blanca's Flora de Filipinas. Trinidad Hermenegildo Padro de Tevera Igoricho is born on April 13, 1857, died March 25, 1925. 
was a physician, member of the Philippine Commission, and founder of the Federal Party. He was also a consummate scholar, as well as a bibliophile and bibliographer. Padre de Tavera was considered the man of vast learning and probably the most versatile of the Filipino writers of his time, except for Rizal, of course. He wrote on many subjects from medicine to paleography, linguistics, numistics, cartography, history, metrical, romances, education, and social problems. Leon Maguerero, on the other hand, is a nationalist scientist and the so-called father of botany in the Philippines. He was born on January 21, 1853 in Ermita, Manila. He was also dubbed as the first Filipino industrial scientist, forensic chemist, and father of Philippine pharmacy. Anacleto del Rosario y Sales, a leading Filipino chemist and pharmacist during the Spanish colonial period, regarded as the father of Philippine science and laboratory, was born in Santa Cruz, Manila. Del Rosario invented the formula for producing a pure kind of alcohol from tuba in a nipa palm. This formula won for Del Rosario the first prize during the World Fair in Paris, France, in 1881. Manuel S. Guerrero was born on January 8, 1877, died January 4, 1919. Was a Filipino medical doctor who studied very, very in infants in the Philippines. Guerrero was born in Ermita, Manila, then became part of the Captaincy General of the Philippines on January 8, 1877. If you are aware of that beriberi, it is a disease in infants wherein there are red skin lesions on the body of the infants. Beriberi also causes muscle weakness and is believed to be caused by thiamine deficiency. Okay. Now, let's move on to American colonization. The Americans established the Bureau of Government Laboratories to deal with the study of tropical diseases and laboratory projects. This was replaced with the Bureau of Science to nurture the development of science and technology. This was again replaced by the Institute of Science. Science and technology focused on agriculture, food processing, forestry, medicine, and pharmacy. They established the public education system and established the University of the Philippines. They reorganized school science, basic education focused on nature studies and science and sanitation. They improved engineering works and health conditions by creating more public hospitals than the Spaniards and by doing research to control diseases. They improved transportation and communication. New technologies were introduced by American scholars in the country. However, mineral resources in the country were exploited during this time. So, malaming pagmimina ang nangyari sa Philippines noon. And the ones that are benefiting from that are the Americans. Okay? Now, let's move to post-colonial period. After colonization by Japan, the country focused on building institutions and public facilities such as schools, hospitals, and transportation systems, as well as providing technological training and human resource development. Though limited in resources, the country focused in improving science and technology. One way is through the use of overseas development allocations or ODA to help in scientific productivity and technological capability. Human resource development focused on producing engineers, scientists, technology experts, doctors, and other professionals. Okay, inclined to the upcoming elections, I am making a disclaimer. This is purely educational. I am not promoting any candidate. This is purely educational, okay? So, let's move on to 
during Ferdinand Marcos' terms, he mandated the Department of Education, Culture, and Sports, or DEX, now known as the Department of Education, or DEPED, to promote science, courses in public high schools, and additional budget for research projects in applied science and science education was granted by Marcos. Part of the war damage fund from the Japanese was donated to private universities and colleges for the creation of science and technology related courses and to promote research. The 3.5 hectare lot in Bukutan, Tagig, was proclaimed in 1968 as the Philippine Science Community, now the site of Department of Science and Technology or DOST. Seminars, workshop, training programs, and scholarship on fisheries and oceanography were also sponsored by the government. The Philippine Coconut Research Institute, Philcorn, was tasked to promote the modernization of the coconut industry. Several agencies and organizations were established like Philippine Textile Institute, Philippine Atomic Energy Commission, now the Philippine Nuclear Institute, National Grains Authority, now the National Food Authority, Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources Research and Development, Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration, or also known as Pag-asa, Philippine National Oil Company, Plant Breeding Institute, International Rice Research Institute or IRI, Bureau of Plant Industry, Bureau of Forest Products, National Committee on Geological Sciences, National Science Development Board or NSDB, was organized as the National Science and Technology Authority, NSTA, in 1981. In 1976, National Academy of Science and Technology, or NAST, was established to be the reservoir of scientific and technological expertise in the country. Salary increases for teachers and administrators at the Philippine Science High School were granted. The Philippine Science High School in Visayas and Mindanao were established. During Corazon Aquino's presidency, on the other hand, there is the National Science and the Technology Authority, or NSTA, was replaced by the Department of Science and Technology, or DOST, giving science and technology representation in the cabinet. She also created the Presidential Task Force for Science and Technology, which came up with the first Science and Technology Master Plan, STMP. The goal of STMP was for the Philippines to achieve a newly industrialized country status by the year 2000. It was during her term that Executive Order No. 128 abolished RA No. 3859, also known as the Philippine Inventors Incentive Act. This Philippine Inventors Commission was under the Science Development Board. It gave assistance to Filipino inventors through giving financial aid, patent application assistance, legal assistance, and to help inventors market their products domestically and abroad. Despite the abolishment of the Philippine Inventors Commission, her administration gave rise to the new avenues for the government to aid the progress of science and technology in the country. Okay, during Fidel Ramos' presidency naman, there was a significant increase in personnel specializing in the science and technology field. The Philippines had approximately 3,000 competent scientists and engineers. The doctors to the barrios program made healthcare accessible even in far-flung areas in the country. You know what? These doctors to the barrios still exist as of today. There is still a project from DOH that deploys doctors to far-flung areas in the Philippines and they are doctors that are used to be their scholars, okay? They are doctors under the DOH scholarship program, okay? The National Program for Gifted Filipino Children in Science and Technology was created for high school students who wanted to major in science and engineering in college. 
the Magna Carta for Science and Technology Personnel, Republic Act Number no. 8439, Science and Technology Scholarship Law of 1994, Republic Act Number no. 7687, Inventors and Inventions Incentives Act, Republic Act No. 7459 and the Intellectual Property Code of the Philippines, Republic Act No. 8293 were established. During his term, Science and Technology Agenda for National Development was established. Now, let's move on to Joseph Estrada's term. Two major legislation that he signed were Philippine Clean Air Act of 1999, Republic Act No. 8749 and Electronic Commerce Act of 2000, Republic Act 8792. Okay, he launched a full-scale program based on cost-effective irrigation technologies. He also announced that dole outs are out which meant basic health care, basic nutrition, and useful education for those who want but cannot afford it. He said that they would speed up the program to establish one science high school in every province. Now, let's move on to Benigno Aquino III's term. He conferred four new national scientists for their contribution in the scientific field. Gavino C. Trono, Marine Biology, Angel C. Alcala, Biological Science, Ramon C. Barba, Horticulture, Edgardo D. Gomez, Marine Biology. Okay? It was Benigno Aquino III who conferred these four new national scientists. Today, let's move on to Rodrigo Duterte's term. The science and technology sector is seen to be a priority based on the budget for research and development that grew by nearly six times over the same period. The focus of DOST is to put the results of R&D into commercialization in order to gain new intellectual properties. Currently, the Philippines has the Philippine Space Technology Program which launched the Wata 2 in 2018 after the launch of the Wata 1 in 2016 that displayed the Philippine flag in space. The current administration also gives importance to agriculture and disaster preparedness. Okay, now let's move on to government policies on science and technology. In 2015, DOSD has sought the expertise on NCRP to consult various sectors of society to study how the Philippines can prepare itself in meeting the ASEAN 2015 goals. The following are the policies that were the results of the consultation. Social Sciences, Humanities, Education, International Policies and Governance that includes integrating ASEAN awareness in basic education without adding to the curriculum, emphasizing teaching in the mother tongue, developing school infrastructure, and providing for ICT broadband, and local food security. Then we have physics, engineering, and industrial research, earth and space sciences, and mathematics which includes emphasizing degrees, licenses, and employment opportunities, outright grants for peer monitoring, review of RA 9184, harnessing science and technology as independent mover of development, medical, chemical, and pharmaceutical sciences, ensuring Compliance of drug manufacturing firms with ASEAN harmonized standards by full implementation of the Food and Drug Administration. Creating an educational council dedicated to standardization of pharmaceutical services and care. Empowering food and drug agencies to conduct evidence-based research as pool of information, allowing 2% of the GDP to research and legislating a law supporting human genome project. Biological sciences, agriculture, and forestry, on the other hand, includes 
protecting and conserving biodiversity by full implementation of existing laws, use of biosafety and standard model by ASEAN countries, promoting indigenous knowledge systems and indigenous people's conservation, and formulation of common food and safety standards. Other programs supported by the Philippine government through DOST include providing funds for basic research and patents related to science and technology, providing scholarship for studies of students in science and technology, establishing more branches of Philippine science high school system, creating and developing science and technology parks, establishment of Balik Scientist Program, establishment of National Science Complex and National Engineering Complex. The Philippine American Academy of Science and Engineering identifies several capacity building programs such as establishment of national centers of excellence, manpower and institutional development programs, establishment of regional centers to support scientific industries, establishment of science and technology business centers, and strengthening of science education at an early age. Science education focuses on teaching, learning, and understanding science. In the field of science education, several science-related programs and projects were created to develop scientific literacy. These include special science classes, special science elementary schools, Philippine science high school system, STEM track of the K-12 education system, Pickery Project, offering basic science courses in the general education curriculum. The Philippine Development Plan 2017-2022 to is a massive undertaking in improving the country's infrastructure, increasing energy access, lowering costs for citizens, keeping up with economic growth, and staying within the bounds of glo global agreements, for climate change and sustainable growth. It was approved by the National Economic and Development Authority or NEDA, Board and President Rodrigo Duterte on February 20, 2017. The impact will be manifested in the following outcomes. 1. The Philippines will be upper middle income country by 2022. 2. Growth will be more inclusive as manifested by a lower poverty incidence in rural areas from 30% in 2015 to 20% in 2022. 3. The Philippines will have a high level of human development by 2022. 4. The unemployment rate will decline from 5.5% to 3-5% to in 2022. 5. There will be greater trust in government and society. Six, individuals and communities will be more resilient. Seven, Filipinos will have greater drive for innovation. So, it's sad to say that I admit we haven't met one of these. And that is number four. The unemployment rate will decline from 5.5% to 3 to 5% in 2022. Because during the year 2020, we have faced the pandemic, which is not foreseen during this Philippine Development Plan made in 2017. And it is undeniable that we haven't lowered the unemployment rate because of the pandemic. And what's worst, it increased at a high rate. Okay? The pillars of the said program includes number one, malasakit, refers to the goal to regain people's trust in public institutions and each other. These strategies aim to promote awareness of anti-corruption measures, invigorate the public sector, increase access to legal aid, and promoting culture-sensitive governance. Number two, pagbabago aimed at reducing inequality by increasing opportunities for growth and transformation. The popularized term has been inclusive growth. 
universal social protection, basic education, and other social services will be improved upon while also raising the country's status in the global market for more opportunities. Number three, patuloy na pag-unlad, focuses on economic growth. The Philippines have seen massive growth in the past decade or so through their change from an agricultural economy to industry and manufacturing-focused powerhouse. The Philippines plan to focus on continued growth of their technology, R&D, and innovation sectors. Philippine Congress has also created laws that serve as legal framework for science and technology. Some other areas that the country is looking forward related to science and technology include the use of alternative and safe energy, harnessing mineral resources, finding cure for various illnesses and illness, fighting climate change and global warming, increasing food production, preservation of natural resources, coping with natural disasters and calamities, infrastructure development. Now, let's talk about some famous Filipinos in the field of science and technology. We have Aisa Mijeno. She invented the salt lamp. Then, Angel Alcala. Then, we have Mr. Angel Alcala. He has outstanding contributions to marine science. We also have Cesar Saloma. He also have outstanding contribution to physics. Then we have Dominic Chung, Lamberto Andrada, and Antonio Liave. They invented the salamander amphibious tricycle. Mr. Edgardo Gomez, who has outstanding contribution to marine science. Enrique Ostrea, Jr., invention of the meconium drug testing. Fabian Dairit, Outstanding Contributions to Herbal Medicine. Fedel Mundo, she invented the medical incubator from indigenous and cheap materials. Gregory Tangonan, he has outstanding contributions to communications technology. Jose Cruz Jr., he has outstanding contributions to electrical engineering. Josefino Comiso, Outstanding Contributions to Antarctica Satellite Imaging. Then Lilia Patena, She has Outstanding Contributions to Plant Biotechnology. Lourdes Cruz, She also has Outstanding Contributions to Sea Snail Venom. Marie Jo Ruiz, She has Outstanding Contributions to Education and Graph Theory in Mathematics. Rafael Guerrero III, he has outstanding contributions to tilapia culture. Ramon Barba, he has outstanding contributions to tissue culture in Philippine mangoes. And William Padolina, who has outstanding contributions to chemistry. Now, let's talk about our indigenous science. Some examples of indigenous knowledge that are taught and practiced by the indigenous people are predicting weather conditions and seasons through animal behavior and celestial bodies. This is applicable even in earthquakes. Diba? During earthquakes or before an earthquake hits our land, mapapansin natin na yung mga animals natin is ligalig. Ligalig sila and they are restless. Okay? Using herbal medicine, Preserving foods, classifying plants and animals based on cultural properties, preserving and selecting good seeds for planting, using indigenous technology, building local irrigation systems, classifying soils for planting based on cultural properties, producing beverages from tropical fruits, and keeping the custom of growing plants and vegetables in the yard. Key. Okay. Do sa classifying food seeds for planting, okay? Aware naman tayo dun sa ginagawa nila to classify a good seed is to submerge them in water. 
those seeds na lulutang is considered as the bad seed and the one that is submerged are the good seeds okay that was just an example of that indigenous practice okay so that ends our discussion thank you for watching and i hope you have learned and wrote notes from important details in this discussion okay have a good day everyone